I'm very well aware of the mayor's position on this matter, but yesterday, Mayor Gwynn addressed the fine citizens of Ocala and stated his position emphatically in regards to the grievance that I filed on behalf of three victims that are employed to the Ocala Police Department. Now, I'm sure that it's easily verifiable by you with your experience, education, and training as it is, that in the majority of situations of this nature, that the accuser, the accused, is removed from their position of power. Not to discipline them prematurely prior to a full and thorough investigation being conducted, but in order to maintain the integrity of the investigation process as it relates to the victims and the witnesses equally. Now, Mayor Gwinnett addressed the city and let them know that he has no intention on placing Chief Gregory Graham on inactive status during this investigation. I would like to know the council's position on this as it relates to the potential influence that Gregory Graham could assert over the witnesses. His mere presence in that building is a constant everyday reminder to the witnesses that are going to help us prove these allegations against Chief Graham. And it's a re-victimization re of the victims on a daily basis as well. I would ask the council to look further into this matter and immediately remove Chief Graham from active status. I also ask the council to let the five citizens of Ocala know their position on the funding of the outside investigative source that Mayor Gwynn chose, specifically a private law firm. As you well know, when an attorney conducts an investigation, the majority of the results of that investigation are then protected by attorney-client privilege and work product doctrine. How can you expect the five citizens of Ocala to believe that a transparent and thorough investigation, unbiased investigation, is going to be conducted under those set of circumstances? I'm ready for a response. Let me address a couple of the crimes comments as well as what you didn't bring up. Um, the uh, attorney who was retained to do the uh, investigation is the city's labor lawyer. He's been uh, used in the past to investigate other matters like this and does some kind of contract. And that's, that's how that happened. And I'm saying that's what the mayor uh, decided to use it in this case. Uh, because he's deep on the force in the past, he continues to do it. Um, as to your concern about attorney client privilege and work product, um, he will be doing this on behalf of the city, will be making a report, uh, and thus the basis for that report um, should be public. And I will follow up with him on that tomorrow um, so that, uh, so that you know, we, can, we can avoid any issues on that. May, may I comment on that, sir, just sure. for one moment, please? Sure. Thank you. I apologize for interrupting. I think it's relevant for me to respond contemporaneously. Um, I, I had occasion to speak with that gentleman, and he made it clear that notes and impression, mental impressions would not be available. Wouldn't you agree that if Florida Department of Law Enforcement, Enforcement were engaged to conduct the same investigation, that in fact all relevant materials would be made public record? No, ma'am, I don't know that because, and here's, here's what I'm saying, the mental impression issue, the work product issue, is not what I'm addressing. I'm addressing the attorney client privilege issue. Um, but uh, there is an exception in the Public Records Act um, for the types of documents that you're talking about. But while you mentioned the FDLA, um, because I read the newspaper too, um, uh, I spoke this afternoon with Scott McInerney, who's the director of the FDLA Office of Investigative Investigations, which is the office of the FDLA that is uh, authorized by far statute to investigate. Specifically, Section 943.03 for statutes, one specific direction by the governor, by the executive director, the department shall investigate this conduct, the official duties of public officials and employees, and members of public corporations, and authorities subject to suspension or removal by the governor, and it continues on, uh, resulting in the filing of the proceedings or before action. Um, because I was under the impression that the FDLA handled criminal matters, 
I read to them the summary of your letter. Mr. McInerney said he was already familiar with the investigation and with the allegations and that this is not the type of matter that the FDLA will investigate um, because it appeared to him, uh, as it appeared to me, that what you were uh, uh, alleging is a violation of your client's civil rights. He, he characterized it as administrative or internal matter and not a criminal matter. Thus, it is not something that the FDLA will investigate. Um, you would agree, sir, that if the governor ordered them to do so, they would in fact do no, so. No, ma'am, right? that's not what he said. He said, in fact, that they do not investigate these matters because the direction by the governor is limited to the uh, to the criminal types of matters that is within the scope of their activities. Um, he said this is not what they investigate. So I don't know if the if the FDLA did investigate it. I don't know how their criminal uh, public record stuff is because I don't deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know that I will follow up with uh, with Mr. Larkin tomorrow to discuss the attorney-client privilege. Um, now, while we're talking about Mr. Larkin, it's my understanding that he scheduled an appointment to meet with you to help him in his investigation, uh, and that while he was an hour outside of Tallahassee, you called and canceled that. That's not factual. That's not I, true. That's, the way that you just stated it, it's and not true. What is factual? What's factual is they called me yesterday and asked me if they could go ahead and meet with me in order to turn over evidence to them. I said that I would be happy to do so when I was ready. They said, are you ready for tomorrow? I said, I will get back to you as to an 11 a.m. time slot. This morning at approximately 5.47 a.m., and I'll go ahead and pull my sent emails. I sent electronic mail to not Mr. Larkin, Mr. Bonfante, um, instructing him that I was not available at 11 a.m. So if he had already left Tallahassee, was en route for a potential 11 a.m. meeting at 5.42 a.m. I can't comment on that. Perhaps he chooses to be quite early. You will be willing to meet with him? Yes, I'll be willing to meet with them. Here's my suggestion to counsel. Um, Ms. Uh, Franks has raised a Ms. Serious, Frank. I'm sorry, Ms. Frank has raised a serious issue, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously uh, will need to be addressed at mm -hmm. some point. I would advise you, however, that in connection with any action that you take concerning Keeper, that these matters are subject to the matter set forth in the city charter. Under the city charter, there are two ways to suspend the case chief. One is for the mayor to um, to refer charges in writing against the police chief. That, that, that decision, the decision on that suspension, is then made by council at its next regular meeting or at a special meeting called for that purpose. That would require a majority of council vote to uphold the suspension or removal of office. The second way to do it is for a majority of council members on their own to prefer charges against the chief. They would then have the same type of meeting, but it would require a board this vote to actually suspend or remove the
Um, I feel personally that um, he should be removed temporarily because Thank of the you. fact that it can be, in my opinion, investigation of both ends. And I feel for his protection more than anything else that that's a, and, and I voiced that to the mayor during our conversation. I've known Greg Graham for a long time, much more than I've had on council. But at this point, I feel that um, for his protection, because things can happen on both ends. If these charges are not proper and, and people are doing something, then they have the access to him. If there are other things going on, he has access to them. So at this point, um, I would send a motion that we put him on to this great meeting. for both sides. I'd be unbiased as I can, but there is always a, a, a threat to both sides when, when you have a situation like this. Charging with the side. Oh, thank you. It's a very tough situation. Um, again, I go way back with the chief on a couple of different avenues. I'm not passing any judgment whatsoever. Um, and I know you're saying that by doing this, I'm passing judgment, but I am not. And I'm just trying to do what is right for the citizens of America. Thank you. Thank you.
I do have one other comment to make to the council. Mayor Gwynn has made his, his stance very clear as it relates to uh, these allegations and where he stands. He emphatically stated that Chief Graham is being attacked and that he is upset by this. As such, he's also indicated his intentions on attending the three briefings that are scheduled for tomorrow at 7 a.m., 3 p.m., and 9 p.m. for the specific purpose of addressing this matter. I request that you ask him not to do so. The people that he will be addressing, amongst them, will be the victims as well as the witnesses. And the mayor's clear support of the chief could influence their willingness to participate in this investigation and again, re-victimize the victims. I ask that you instruct him not to do that. It was my understanding when we were on the top of the the attorney that he would give instructions and not that any interreaction with them as well as them with him. So to me, that would be some sort of interreaction that would violate that. No, sir, not, not Gregory Graham. Oh, yeah. oh, Mayor Gwynn. Yeah. Oh, so, so, so let me say this to you. This is Frank. Yeah. Uh, not okay. So they can't tell me not to go over to my police department and see my employees. That would be like saying, I can never go over to the police department. I can't go to crime staff meeting. I can't do anything uh, to do my job at the police department. So that's not going to happen. This um, wow. situation. Really? Uh, <laughs> Ask the mayor to step down. So this situation is turned into Bobby Frank show. And, uh, not about your clients anymore. Uh, it's about you. Uh, what? Really? Uh, Are you kidding? I'm just speaking of my presentation. And I'm disappointed. Wow. I'm disappointed in this council to be. I'm sure they're disappointed in you as yes. well. Yes. Amen. Yes. The rest of us are. I'll let you speak. Please. Okay. So you let me speak. I'm disappointed in this council that when a room full of people get in here, they suddenly change their mind from what they thought uh, <coughs> previously. I sat in here with a room full of people for three and a half hours and answered every objection when I hired Chief Graham. And I knew I was doing the right thing, and I stand by that, that, uh, that decision. I know I'm doing the right thing by not putting him on administrative leave. Um, this is just amazing um, that, uh, that this has happened. Uh, it, it, it's just I can't, I can't, uh, can you can't get over it. Are you finished? He's there. He's probably not. Yeah. But you have a motion. I have a motion. You have a motion. You have a motion. Her comment and his response are not perfect. That's right. I agree. I'd like a response from the council as it relates to um, Mayor Gwynn attempting to go to the briefings tomorrow and the statements that he's going to make during those briefings. It's under it's 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 understandable if council believes that Chief Graham for the integrity of the investigation should be suspended, then I think that it, it, it doesn't take too much too many mental gymnastics to get to the point that Mayor Gwynn should not be allowed to go in and address the Ocala Police Department at large with his support for Chief Gregory Graham. I'm gonna go over and drive I'm, I'm I'm going to go to the motion on the floor, but it does not include these comments. And we're going to vote on this motion. Okay. okay Thank and you. And then we can take up anything from that point. Right, Mr. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Any other comments on this motion? Period. Okay. Call roll. Ms. Penalty? Aye. Ms. Drake? Aye. Mr. Mahler? Aye. Lesson. Nay. Mr. Wardell. Okay, so I'm. Did I say something? Yes. 
So I'm going to be over there at 7 o'clock in the morning, 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. And if you want to do something to stop me, you send someone over there to arrest me. I'll take the last 15 seconds to remind the fine people of Ocala that you can issue a recall on this mayor that refuses to have a transparent process and is refusing to stop victimizing these victims and in refusing to stop tampering with this case. That's enough, please. Thank you for your time, Council. I appreciate it. Passing again. Mm -hmm. Now it's 5.05. Mm -hmm.